Welcome to iLecture Online. Here's another example of a JEE advanced que a test question, again in ENM, and this relates to a generator. You'll see in just a moment why I say that, that this is kind of like a generator. Well, at first I didn't think so, because when I read the problem it says the following, a circular coil of radius R, right here, has negligible resistance and it's made up of n turns, so it's a whole number, number of turns. As shown in the figure, its two ends are connected to two wires and it is hanging by those wires. So you can see that it's hanging by the wires. And uh, with its plane being vertical, so the plane is vertical, the two wires are connected to a capacitor which has a charge Q on it. So it starts out with a charge Q on the capacitor and it's also connected with a switch. The switch is open and the coil is in a horizontal uniform magnetic field so parallel to the plane of the coil. So you have a magnetic field going this direction parallel to the plane of the coil. So that's the picture right here. Also notice how long this problem is. You only get three minutes to do the problem. It takes almost three minutes to read a problem and figure out what's going on. So yeah, this is a rather challenging problem. Uh, let's see here, when the switch is closed, so at one point the switch is going to be closed like this and since there is negligible resistance, the current will run through the circuit really quickly and that's what they're expecting here. When the switch is closed, the capacitor gets discharged to the coil in a very short time. By the time the capacitor is fully discharged, the magnitude of the angular momentum gained by the coil will be. So, why would there be an angular momentum? because the coil will begin to rotate just like in a generator when you change the magnetic field and there's a coil in that magnetic field the magnetic field is changing well something will happen well notice let's assume for a moment that the current goes in this direction so what happens is take your fingers right hand rule bring your fingers down then curl your fingers into the direction of the magnetic field. Let's see if I can do that, like this, like this. Notice there will be a force in this direction. So a force will come out of the board. We'll do that by putting a little dot like this. And say the force on this, on this side will be out of the board. And now, of course, on the other side, the current will be upward. And again, fingers up to the magnetic field. The thumb will point inward. So you can see that the force on the other side will be into the board. And so we'll do a little cross there. So you can see that this creates a torque causing the coil to start rotating around like this. Now, presumably, the current goes through the coil, coil so, so quickly that the coil has hardly any movement in it already. Enough to indicate there's angular momentum, but not enough where it's rotated out completely like that. So also keep in mind that I have a few equations on here that the angular momentum, of course, is equal to the moment of inertia times the angular velocity. So what do I have on the board here? Well first I started thinking about in terms of this. That the moment of inertia of a circular object like this with nothing on the inside, so like a wire, is going to be one half mr squared. The energy contained in the capacitor will be one half the capacitance times the voltage which is one half q squared over v and the rotational energy of a rotating object will be one half the moment of inertia times the angular velocity. But notice there's a bunch of things we don't know. We don't know the voltage. We don't know the mass of the ring. We don't know the angular velocity after all this is happening. So I began to think that starting around in this concept here wasn't going to be very fruitful. Then I looked at all the answers and I realized that all the answers are identical in this part. These parts are all identical in the four answers. The only difference is what's in front. Pi over 2, pi, 2 pi, and 4 pi. So then I thought about generators. And with a generator, you realize that there's going to be a torque. And the torque is equal to the area of the loop times the current times the magnetic field. Or see, at least I should say proportional to. Proportional to. Okay, so if that's the case, we have the magnetic field, we have a current, 
It's going to run for a while until it's fully discharged. We have a cross-sectional area. So, the cross-sectional area is going to be pi r squared. All right. So maybe that gives me some more idea here because I have an r squared everywhere and then I have a pi over 2, pi 2, pi 4, pi. So I'm leaning towards answer B, but we're not done yet. Because essentially what's going to happen is to gain angular momentum, just like to gain linear momentum, there has to be an impulse, there has to be a force. So with a linear concept, we have the impulse, I for impulse, and I'll write IMP there for impulse, is equal to force times delta T, which is equal to the change in momentum. Well, for rotational concept, if we convert that to a rotational concept, what we have here is that the impulse is equal to, well, instead of force, we use torque times delta T, and I should use a small t because it's time, times delta T, is equal to the change in angular momentum. Ah, and they're asking us the magnitude of the angular momentum, which is going to be equal to the change, which therefore is going to be equal to the impulse imparted by the forces caused by the current running through the wire, the magnetic field interacting with those moving charges, causing a force. Well, essentially in rotational uh, in a rotational setting, we have torque times delta T instead of force times delta T. And the torque is proportional to the area of the loop times the current times the magnetic field. Of course, the current may not be constant. Now, how does that compare to here? Well, the number of loops, the amount of charge, obviously the more charge, the more current, the B field, the strength of the B field, all that makes sense. The only difference is we also have a torque which is proportional to the area which is pi r squared. So I have an r squared there. We need a pi. Since we need a torque to get a change in rotational or in the angular momentum, rotational momentum or angular momentum, the answer then would be that A, the area is pi r squared. So I vote for B and I don't think these are correct. Turns out that is the correct answer and that's probably the way you want to think about it. So if we did energy and moment of inertia and wasn't going to get us anywhere because we didn't know enough to do anything with it, but if we then thought about the concept of the generator, the forces created as current runs through the wire, interacting with the magnetic field, giving it a torque, the torque is proportional to the area times the current times the magnetic field. Therefore, we know that the area is pi r squared. And then we look for a pi r squared, which is only in B. We don't have it anywhere else. The number of coils, the number of turns, the amount of charge in the B field will strengthen the angular momentum or weaken it, depending upon how big those values are. And that has to be the obvious answer. And that is how it's done. Three minutes? <laughs> Well, I did a lot of explanation. I think you can do this in three minutes when you quickly think about that concept. That's the key. If you think about generator and the concept of impulse and the linear sense and impulse in the rotational sense, that it's all about the torque, which gives you a change in angle momentum. I think. They drawing. And they did provide the drawing. Yes, that's right. Uh, they didn't, of course, put all the other little stuff in there that, you know, the current and all that. But yes, they did give you that drawing, a simple drawing, and um, yeah, I did go the wrong way at first, but then quickly realized I don't have enough information, so what else can I think about, and that's when I thought about the generator. I don't know if you can just think of that in just the three minutes, it just has to come to you. That's why you practice.